Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Pints with Air. I'm Brent Hefley, the Sales and Marketing Director for Air Acoustics, and I am here as always with our VP and Senior Engineer, Ariel Brown, and our CEO and Expert Technician, Ryan Berry. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers, everyone out there. All right, it's a beautiful spring day here. Loving it. It just started snowing snow here. here. You guys have some snow, so it's a beautiful <laughs> spring day there. Yep. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, very cool. Well, I'm I'm moving into the uh, the the spring summer beers again. I've 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 shifted away from all those dark beers, and <laughs> I found this one from Pelican Brewing out on the coast here. Um, it's in this. They have this brewery in this great little bay that has a surf break, so you can go out and sit on their deck and watch right. guys surf in oh, this sweet. in this bay, uh, wearing wetsuits, of course, because the water is cold. But it's <laughs> uh, it's Pelicans Brewing Dankest Hour. It's a dank oh. India pale ale, nice. and it is it is thick. It is it's got some. <laughs> That color's not from the barley. That's just from hops. That's, I, I swear to God. <laughs> well, ours is a little lighter. Yours is a little lighter. Really? But I did, I was able to steal my pints with air glass back from the kids. Nice. Like, I, I look for it and it's like, they're always, they've always taken it. Like, look, dad, pints with air. I'm like, <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> oh, the things we teach children. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh. So, yeah, so we went, I got another Colorado brewery, Dry Dock. Uh, oh, dry, yeah. Dry, so we got Apricot Blonde. Nice. And, uh, you know, one of my, one of my, you know, when I was young, one of my first beers that I actually liked was a, uh, was the Pyramid Apricot Ale. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. which, which was, you know, really, you know, pretty, pretty subtle on the apricot. Um, right. And, 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 as are most blondes. This one's not subtle. At all, um, I, uh, yeah. you know, I I um, cracked it and poured it and just got close to it and just smacked in the face. This actually wow. says actually brewed with apricot puree. Wow. And I just went through a six pack of this not too long ago, and it's it's a good beer. It's no joke. It's how much uh, vitamin C is in it, right? Like it's <laughs> it's got to be like your daily recommended allowance, two hundred percent maybe. They probably boil it off or something. <laughs> probably. <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah that's that's crazy so make sure you're you're an apricot fan if you're gonna give that one a whirl yeah for sure yeah that's always it's always there's a few breweries i trust with with those fruit beers but so yeah. often i look at it and i see the combos i'm like wow that could go wrong so easily yeah yeah oh man cool well that's uh that's good stuff We've got a uh, an exciting topic, at least exciting for for us, because we get to introduce another new thing today: um, the new USB module, USB two for us. Um, Specifically for the QX five. Specifically for the QX five. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, we've been doing USB for quite a while since two thousand nine, um, mm -hmm. right? Um, Sounds about right. Yeah, something like that. So what? That's yeah, that's when twelve years, right? Um, so it's it's uh, it's time for a two point version. Um, yep. Right. So, yeah. What are we doing, Ariel? Well, so um, you know, for for you know, probably the good last what ten years or so, probably nearly ten years. So we you know the first gen uh, XMOS based solution uh, um, that we licensed. Um, and so, um, this one is based on a second gen, uh, XMOS silicon. And so it's, uh, more efficient, more capable, slightly lower power, but not really. Um, and, um, and we're able to, uh, bump up the numbers a bit and as, as well as, uh, several other improvements on the board, get, get some really nice performance gains also. Great. So, um, like I said, so this is, uh, the, the the core USB solution is the second gen XMOS, so that's one of the uh, uh, consider an, an upgrade there. Um, the other thing we've upgraded and again, you know, most of this is uh, taken from the QB920 um, development. Okay. So we're able to take a lot of that and then also add in several improvements from it. So 
what this shares with that is also uh, uh, an improved galvanic isolation solution. So um, it's uh, we're able to find a you know it's more or less an optical isolator. It's actually more of a it can be a, a kind of a it's a it's, it's an integrated circuit. It's not actual optical isolation. It's typically some kind of um, either um, uh, like uh, the our old solution was this kind of called giant magneto resistive. So it's, it's a kind of a uh, implementation of a transformer inside of this integrated circuit. Um, this one, I'm not going to say exactly what it is. I don't want to try and not spill too many secrets, but mm -hmm. um, it, it works very similar, uh, but it is even higher bandwidth and has better a, a better slew rate specs and better um, um, uh, um, 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 uh, delay specs. And so it, it, uh, it's just a little bit better as far as jitter and um, nice. um, isolation is basically the same, but it just has better actual transmission performance across that barrier. Right. And, and when we did, I think I remember, if we mentioned this before, I remember when I talked about this, but uh, when we did a listening test, of so just swapping this one part, that was maybe the shortest listening test I've done and just how obvious the improvement was. Oh, um, wow. No, we definitely went back and listened a long term and confirmed that it wasn't just a change. It was sure, an actual, it was a good so change, obvious. but yeah. it, was, it was dramatic how much change that one change nice. made. Nice. And just to be clear, we're isolating noise coming in from the computer side. So we're keeping that out of the QX5. That's the intention. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. is so, so that we are isolating the, uh, the ground plane domains um, between essentially the computer side and the audio side. Right. So we have, um, so you have to isolate power and ground between the actual USB as well as uh, from our from from our circuitry. Right, which is great. We do our best to clean that all up and catch all that before it gets to the uh, FPGA or the DAC. Right, right. Keep it out. And then one of the other big improvements is this, and again, to share with QB920, is um, it is is basically a new um, is is basically a reclocking of the data before it is sent across that isolation. Um, one I'll admit one of the flaws of the XMOS is um, is its I squared S output is not the best and it has uh, some quirks to it. And so it benefits greatly from some um, from some um, reclocking. Okay. So um, that is also makes a huge, huge difference. Um, it creates some other um, constraints, but we're able to work with those and uh, get a really, really nice improvement there. Yeah. And then, so with all that, and with um, the high clock rates that we have as a master clock in the QX5, we're able to basically bump up, uh, you know, sample rates basically two x from what the QB920 is capable of. So we can go up to 768k PCM. Mm -hmm. We should be able to do 512 uh, DSD native and 256 DOP. Wow. Yeah, that's. That covers a lot, right? Like, I mean, it really kind of covers just about everything out there at this point in time, and hopefully, we'll future-proof it for quite a quite a long time to come for everybody. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's test set test up. music that falls above that, but for any any real music, it's going to be Precisely. within that range for quite a while, for sure. Yeah, I mean, there's always you can always go higher, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. what are you really gaining out of it versus what, what you know the size of the yeah. files and everything else, and so practically. You know, you don't really see anything above, you know, you don't rarely see anything even at the 768 level. Yeah. Yeah. And then the one last technical improvement that I can think of at the moment is, um, is um, upgraded voltage regulation. Uh, we upgraded to some far more expensive, some ultra, ultra low noise regulators um, on this board. Uh, so it's about probably I think, 10 times lower noise, at least a per spec than um, that were used in, in, in the Rev1 board or the, or the QB9. So it's- um, Fantastic. So it should, yeah. And so that should manifest in, in you, know, you know, that lower noise, um, which then couples onto the signals and hopefully then um, a lower noise, well, less coupling, even across the isolation, should just provide less internal noise inside the chassis. Right, <clears throat> right. 
No, that's 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 amazing. So you know the the thoughts percolating through my mind along as along with most of the other QX5 owners out there, I imagine are, wow, you know how do I get one? You know when when are they available? Do can I do I have to take my unit into a dealer to have this installed? How does this all work? Um, you know yes, that's that was kind of um, part of the thought process that we had with the the QX5 when when it was designed. So you know we learned even from back when we did the QB9 that that upgrades happen. You know the digital the digital world is still developing. It's it's not a fully mature you know domain yet, and you know we're still getting our legs underneath us with you know different formats. DSD became more popular than we saw MQA come out, and uh, we saw you know new format or you know, um, sample rates come out, and so you know the number always keeps kind of changing, and there's always the latest greatest thing. So. When we designed the QB9, you know, we knew it was a 96, 16-bit capable um, DAC at first, and we knew that that wasn't going to last in the long run. So we designed it very modularly to be able to pull out just, you know, one section of it that, um, instead of having to replace entire boards and making people essentially pay for the same technology to be reinstalled with one or two chips being changed. So um, the QX5 was no exception. Um, the Ethernet boards, the digital boards, the the uh, the uh, um, USB boards are all separate boards from each other, and so um, for the um, QX5, for example, all it will take is opening the unit, um, essentially um, removing a couple of screws to disconnect the USB board from the back of the unit, and then um, unplugging some wires and off you go and put the new one in plug the wires back in and put the screws back together and it's good to go with a firmware update. Um, and of course with the QX5, we tried to make the uh, firmware update relatively simple as well. So that's all updatable through a USB uh, flash stick uh, plugged into the back of the unit and uh, away we'll go. Great, right. sounds like it, it falls into my category of a kitchen table upgrade, which because that's my tent workshop, right? It's my kitchen table and right. if I can do it there, then most people at home can, can do one. Yeah, so I mean, we're always, of course, happy to help assist with any of the upgrades. You want to send your unit in, we can get it in. We can do a whole, you know, check on it to make sure everything's still running exactly as it was when it was a new unit. Um, you know, go through all the procedures, see if there's anything that is a cause of concern for us. Very rarely the case with QX5, but uh, um, we can certainly look at that and then send the unit back to you fully upgraded. But um, for those that really want to not lose their music for more than a few days, or a day, um, then uh, we can just send the boards and when it comes in, take it out of your system and effectively be able to do the upgrade on your own. Yeah, yeah so, so, we, so, we, uh, so we got the, the bare boards in this week, uh, so it'll be another week or two and they'll, they'll be stuffed and ready, ready, to, uh, ready to ship. Yep. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. The other nice thing about this uh, new technology is, you know, it does bring the driver you know, kind of in-house, we worked with Thessicon to get the driver we use now. So uh -huh. as things change, if there's any updates or things that we see that would improve the quality of the sound somehow, you know, that gives us the ability to really be able to update those on the fly where, um, and uh, make sure that, you know, we're able to present the latest version of the drivers to people that want them. Oh, that's, that's super useful. So <clears throat> this will be something, once somebody updates this, they'll need to download that driver, uh, and install it for for windows well well they um it now with with, with the current windows 10 it it will still be it'll, it'll be this this is will be compatible it'll be plug and play stock with that. windows 10 driver what okay. the Descon driver gains you particularly is is the ability to do dsd native mm -hmm. right and it has a built-in asio module for yep. those that prefer to play um using asio versus Wasabi, or you know, they really want to play direct sound, which you know I wouldn't recommend, but <laughs> you, you can. But uh, you know, if you're if you don't want to use Wasabi for whatever reason, you you really like the SIO interface, you know, using it that way, uh -huh. then that allows you to do so. So it'll be plug and play with Windows 10 mm -hmm. and yep. you know Mac. I'm assuming um, yep. you can just plug it in, ready to go. But if you want to do some of this, the really high rate stuff, really advanced, yeah. installing that driver will is your ticket. Specifically with DSD. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. That sounds that sounds fantastic. So these will start shipping on 
new units here within, this is the middle of April now. So within this month, we'll be sending those out. And then uh, if somebody wants an upgrade, um, you can email us or contact your dealer. You know, they'll have the information on the, on the cost. Um, this is something that'll be easy, pretty easy to send out to, you know, to over, to overseas uh, distributors um, and have the pieces updated in the field. Um, exactly. This is great. Yeah. So at this, you know, yeah, at this point, any new QX fives that are ordered are going to have the new USB installed on them automatically. So if anybody's wondering which one, which board they're going to get, if you're placing the order now, you're going to have the new one. Yeah. And we'll be capable of all those things right out the gate. Okay. Fantastic. Now, of course, the, the, the next question we all know is going to come up is, is this going to be ready for the eight series? Is this coming out for the, for the eight series too? Sure. So. And yeah, I mean, that'd be the next step, you know, and, it's kind of funny because like it's like oh man back-to-back -back product announcements i was like i don't want to make this like the marketing channel but <laughs> right <laughs> it's kind this of is a beer, it's the beer channel it's not the marketing it's, channel right exactly so <laughs> but at the same time there's a lot of projects that we've been working on along with developing new products and they're all kind of coming to fruition here at the same time so it's kind of put us in this little bit of a phase where we're like okay this week we've got this new product and this week we have the next new product and you know the X8s are, are definitely on the horizon. You know, that's the next one we'll want to upgrade as well. Right. Yep. To that's in the works. So level of technology, it's still in the works. It's a little bit, it's a little bit out still, but uh, when we're getting close to that one, we'll of course do an announcement on that one as well. And it'll be similar to um, the KOX5 and the Q, QB9. Uh, you know, there'll be some different uh, performance capabilities and milestones for it versus the five series, of course, but uh, we'll do something to make it as capable as it can be and have that ready to go. Yeah. Fantastic. All right. Well, that's, that's, uh, it's exciting stuff. If anyone out there has questions about it, uh, email us, pintsatair.com, uh, call your dealer, go in, say, Hey, and, and, uh, get on the list to get your, uh, QX5 upgraded until then. Cheers, everyone. Cheers.